Yeah, so we did talk about this question, this idea over here that how much is the, is the minimum force required for us to be able to top, topple over that object and we could calculate that, that thing in the process. So this is one set of question that we will require to uh, uh, process in our upcoming questions. Uh, another thing that is also input, uh, that is also important is that if we have multiple forces uh, available in a certain scenario, uh, we can essentially ca can calculate the resultant of all of these forces in many different ways. The geometric method is what we call the polygon rule, and there can, or we can also do it by means of uh, by means of appropriate angle and dividing the whole thing into components. So let me just uh, show you what this means. Here we have a couple of things over here. Uh, for example, let's say there is an object on which three forces F1, F2, and F3 which are working and the three forces are all working outwards and the angle between the forces are given in this fa in this fashion. The angle between uh, F1 and F2 is gamma, the angle between F2 and F3 is alpha and then the angle between F1 and F3 is beta. So let's say we have angles in this fashion. If, this, if three forces produce equilibrium like this, then we can write that uh, this then, then then we can write uh, this sorry yeah yeah that these two forces can be uh, can be uh, related to each other uh, in the in, a, in the formula that is very similar to what we call the sine rule for triangles. Do you, have you guys come across the sine rule and the cosine rule of triangles? Do you guys know that thing from your ma ma maths classes? Yes, sir. Yeah. You you have come across this formula, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So if this is, if this is the case, then we can essentially write that these two forces will be rela related to each other by an, a formula that is exactly similar to sine rule. So the way I've written this formula, have a look that if one divided by sine of the angle between the other two angles. So F1 divided by the opposite angle of F1. For example, here F1 is working particularly downwards and the alpha is the angle that is opposite to this one. And A, and the opposite angle for F3 is gamma, opposite angle for F2 is beta. So this is a ratio that we have. If you think that how did this formula actually come into existence? Now there is a geometric derivation for this thing. Let me explain how this thing, this thing actually come into existence. What I want you to visualize that this is the actual scenario of the three forces working on an object. This figure is not essentially drawn to scale, but this essentially this is showing you that what is the how the forces are working on one object. So here we have shown all the all the three forces are working from the object outwards. Now, if I try to represent these three forces in a vector triangle, in that case we'd require to keep the alignment same. And we have to draw a uh, proportional length of sides of the triangle. So each of those sides can represent the involved force for our purpose. So this is where the, this is a figure where these three forces were drawn with appropriate proportion and keeping their values and length appropriate. So we made a vector triangle over here. We would triangle because we have three forces, that's why we have a triangle. So what you, what you should see, I mean, the part that I really want you to appreciate is that have a look f1 over here is working vertically downwards so this vertical this this vertical line is labeled as f1 and the addition was vertically downwards then let's say this is the amount of length that is represented by f1 but we for the sake of drawing we actually extended the uh, f1 arrow further downwards why downwards i'll explain this i'll explain that in a bit so we have made, we have drawn the f1 along the vertical downward direction which is this one then f2 is working upward right so upward right is f2 and the angle between f1 and f2 is how much f1 and f2 the angle between is gamma so over here this is gamma but what is, what is really important for you to understand that you can see over here in this figure very well that the angle between f1 and f2 is not an acute angle gamma is visibly bigger than 90 degrees so we cannot label that angle between F1 and F2 over here. This is not gonna be all right. The angle between F1 and F2 should be 
Because the yeah, because uh, this is the acute angle and this is the complementary angle of this acute angle. Uh, so complementary, uh, no, sorry, supplementary angle. So gamma is supposed to be bigger than 90 degree, which brings the gamma over here. That's one way to put this. The other way to put this is if you just try to understand the exact amount of change of direction for you to achieve that bending effect. Exact amount of change of direction means try to think of a vector, try to think of the vector f1 is working downwards. Then if you want to add this vector that is working upward right, you have to change you have to change that force direction by this much angle and only then can you change this thing so that's why the gamma should be here not inside here so here we so this is essentially how this uh, vector triangle was made with appropriate scale which is not mentioned over here because we don't have values but this is a figure drawn to scale where we have kept their alignments uh, parallel to the original given direction we have represented the lengths with the appropriate number so a proper proper ratio is needed and also we have labeled all of the possible figure uh, possible angles now you can see very well over here that within this triangle we can very easily apply the sine rule logically because the idea of sine rule is that uh, the, any side length is directly proportional to the opposite uh, opposite angles sine ratio now for important for you to observe let me just copy this image and i'll take it to paint for some additional drawing okay so what i really wanted to observe is that because this angle has become better, essentially, how much would this angle be? 180 minus better. 180 minus better. So, 180 minus better. And that, that ratio is equally applicable for the other parts as well. This, is supposed, this, this angle is supposed to be 180 minus alpha. This angle is supposed to be 180 minus gamma. Now, what you should, you should remember that if you have, if, I mean, for sine ratio, if you consider the idea of all sine ten cos, all sine ten cos means uh, this thing, all, all sine ten cos, the quadrant thing. So the, one of the property of sine is that if you have if you have sine theta, you can also rewrite is uh, sine one eighty minus theta. Do you guys know this information? Yes. 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 Sir. yes sir. So sine proportion has the capability to absorb the supplementary angle within itself because the 180 minus degree would mean that we are, we're going to go all the way up to 180 degree and then we're going to move clockwise by theta angle and we're going to reach our expected angle value. So whenever we'll apply the, uh, the sine rule for inside this triangle, have a look, uh, this is the in, this inside triangle, then essentially we can draw that F1 divided by F1, this is F1, F1 divided by this angle. Now this angle is supposed to be how much? 180 minus alpha. And sine 180 minus alpha will be very much equal to sine alpha. So that's why this kid did not write the whole expression. They did it at the final answer. This is essentially what the triangle rule is all about. This is the, one of the first, first ways, common ways to calculate for the uh, angle. And similarly, F2 divided by sine beta. So here is the F, here is the F2 force. The opposite angle, uh, which is developed by beta, is over here. I can zoom on it a little bit. So here, here it is the sine beta. So so this much is the uh, is the angle beta, and this one should be one to minus beta. So here comes the second part. F should be by sine beta. This was originally sine one to minus beta. Then because of the lot of uh, I mean, then 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 this thing was uh, uh, shortened or calculated for one more step, where we got rid of the symbol signs, and eventually we have this expression. So, do we, are we clear about this idea? One of the important between what I need you to understand is that this idea of equilibrium chocolate can happen throughout a couple of days. Uh, but, sorry, not throughout a couple of days. Uh, one of the key parts that I need you to understand that for this triangle that we can see over here, sine sign rule could be easily applied. You can only apply this sign rule, uh, sign rule whenever you have three forces producing equilibrium three forces producing equilibrium. Now, one of the important bit that I really want to discuss with you that if you think basic idea of logic, uh, one of the way we, one of the property of a triangle is this, that the sum of any, any of the two sides should be bigger than the third side. Do you know this thing? 
I mean, this is one of the primary logic for neutral for neutral action. Can you repeat? Yes. What did I just ask? Can you repeat? I no, hold up. Uh, Oh, sorry, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what I was asking because I'm, I'm telling you stops and then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm becoming uh, this one, I'm, I'm uh, non-functional at points. Then I'm, I'm reclaiming back myself in one second. Sir, you I am sort of sleepy. Yes, I, I, I plan to take a uh, big nap uh, after my lunch, but I had to go out square uh, to see some patient and then uh i actually could not do that so, so part of my daily routine was messed up so anyway i mean that's it that i i'm sorry sorry for the trouble i will to see i i didn't mean to ask you any question but what i'm trying to tell you is that this rule of sign rule application is exclusively applicable for cases whenever there are three forces three is the key word here three forces are producing equilibrium on an on an object yes yes sir yes sir so the next thing that I'd like to show you that uh, there is another, uh, so this is one way to find out the resultant. And, and, uh, and the next thing I want to show you is how can we work for, how can we, how can we work for uh, the, so to, to calculate the resultant using a polygon rule. Now, uh, you kids do know the triangle rule of drawing and you also know the parallelogram rule for, for vector diagram. Polygon rule is basically an extension of the triangle rule. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. So the idea of polygon rule is not included in, included in our notes anymore. I mean, the, the notes pretty, note pretty much finishes here. The kid actually did uh, drop this one. So, but the polygon rule is included in, in your syllabus. It's a pretty small, a small thing. Maybe that's why the kid did not copy this part. I'm not sure. But I mean, I'm just going to show you this anyway. Let's say you have an object over here, piece of object over here. And you have two forces working on this object. Let's say one of the forces is working from here. Let me just zoom up out at 100 percent okay so let's say uh we have one force that is working in this direction let's say that force is 100 newton and let's say we have another force that is working on this object which is working in uh this direction so let's say that force is uh 170 newton So let's say we are provided with the angles over here. Let's say the question already is giving us that the angle that these two forces make with the ground is let's say this theta equals to 20 degree. And this iron, uh, which was the symbol that I was looking for. Okay, yeah. And let's say this angle over here is let's say 40 degree. So we have this information function given and the question is asking us to find out the result of these two forces. So the, one of the ways we can essentially solve this problem is going for the triangle rule. The basic idea for triangle rule is that the, the component, component vectors should be placed one after another. So if I just draw, take a scale for 10 Newton as one centimeter, I can essentially represent 100 Newton by 10 centimeter and 170 Newton by 17 centimeter. Now using an idea, using a scale for 17 centimeter for, is not very practical for your purpose because uh, to, uh, come to think about it, I mean, if you try to, try to measure, have a look, at, if you have a ruler, take, take the ruler and have a look, how long is actually 17 centimeter? That is bigger than your small rulers, right? Because yes, small rulers are usually cover up to 15 centimeter mark so taking a scale of 10 10 10 newton equals to one centimeter is gonna very well uh, you can accommodate the 100 newton force pretty easily but finding out the position to for, for finding out, finding out the, find, uh, i mean accommodating, accommodating the figure within your paper might be a nightmare so in the actual case we might as well go for another fraction of it let's say if we go for half of that scale so let me tell you what, what, I'm, what I'm meaning by scale. This discussion that I'm doing is many of you are good at this, but I'm just covering this up for everyone so that we know how to choose the scale. 
So the first skill that I was trying to go for is that I was thinking that I'm gonna use 100 Newton for 10 centimeter. So that's the first skill that popped in my head, which is gonna give me uh, 10 Newton as what? One centimeter. So ideally this is supposed to be my scale, but if I go for this scale, the problem that I'm gonna run out, run, run, uh, run at is that 170 Newton force would, would require a length of how much? 100 Newton is 10 centimeter and 170 Newton uh, should require a length of total 17 centimeter. Drawing 70 centimeter is a pretty, 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 pretty impossible task for a vector triangle. That's why the next thing that I can choose other than going for 100 Newton for 10 centimeter, I can choose this thing to become double. So I can, I can squash my figure by half value. Let's say if I assume that, uh, if I assume that 100 Newton should be represented as, we need more people. So this one should be as, Acha. Hey, yeah. let's say if we, if we divide this scale, for example, let's say if we just show that 100 Newton should be represented by five centimeter, that is a pretty simple way to work with. If this is the case, uh, case, let's just calculate out how much it should be. So for every centimeter, just, just, a, just a continuation from this number, every, con con every comment section below, in which, uh, I mean, what should we label for this case? I mean, 100 Newton represented by five centimeter, or if we reduce it by, it by 10, uh, no, not 10, I'm sorry. If we use it by two, so let's say if I want to represent that 50 centimeter, sorry, my bad. It won't think like, see, I can have to go over the same. So 100 Newton is represented by five centimeter. So how much should we, should, should we require to represent 170 Newton? 170 Newton, you know, how do you like it? It's a lot Someone tell me. 8.5 cm, sir. Exactly. So this has to be 8.5 centimeter. Now drawing a triangle rule or drawing a parallelogram rule for uh, with using a length of five centimeter and 8.5 centimeter is actually quite doable. And you're gonna pretty, pretty well cover more than half of the width of your paper. So this is my preferable choice. So the discussion that I just made over here is to give you an idea, how can we go for scale? First, I tried a, a, a 10 is to 1 ratio, which didn't work out for my purpose very, very appropriately. So then I went for, uh, I mean, this much, I will definitely go by uh, basic calculation. But for this part, where you have a bit of a curve and everything, uh, this is important that we have this uh, scaling uh, knowledge within ourselves. So if, if I want to represent both of these vectors as a triangle rule, important bit, triangle rule, I'm not gonna show you parallelogram rule over here, uh, or I might, I actually might. But what I need to observe is this. If I represent these forces exactly the way they are given to me. So with the horizontal, the 100 Newton force is making 40 degree. With the horizontal, the 170 Newton force is producing, uh, producing some force. So we have 170 Newton working over here. So one of the ways we can approach this problem is that let's say we are first gonna draw a line that is exactly parallel with this line and F exactly length. So uh, begin to do that and hello, hello, hold on, my castle. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yeah. So let's say we go for the triangle rule and we're going to represent, uh, we, we draw a, le a length of uh, how much did you calculate? Uh, five centimeters to represent the 100 Newton force. So if we are trying to draw this arrow, one of the things that you have to draw is that we have to take into account this 40 degree angle. So you cannot randomly draw this straight, draw this arrow in your actual copy or in your actual drawing space. This would be wrong because the logic that we have for 100 Newton force is that it makes 40 degree angle with the horizontal. So first thing first, other than drawing this entire length, let's say I'm gonna rub this off. Okay.
once I draw the horizontal line first, I can use that line to start my triangle rule. So this is the important bit that I must have my uh, horizontal line prepared so that I can work with this angle. So let's say, and now I'm gonna start representing this uh, 100, 100 Newton force at one of the ends. It can be starting over here, it can be starting over here. That's your choice, but you can start anywhere. But you should make exactly equal angle as it says in the question, whether they follow it or not, unless unless otherwise otherwise regulated. That's a very uh, simple phrase to work with. So now I can do is uh, I'm, I can, I'm gonna draw the 100 Newton force. This I'm gonna start from here, one random point, and I draw one length of arrow, which is exactly how much? Five centimeter. So I do this. I might as well want to say it a little bit smaller. Yes. Okay. So this is a five centimeter. But before I before I go for this length, it is important that I must measure this angle. And this angle is supposed to be with the horizontal. This angle is supposed to be forty degrees. And the value of this force is how much? Hundred newton. So we have this much information to us. Now, if we want to go for the triangle rule, we have to do, we have to place all the vector quantities uh, uh, before that. So we can start the 170 newton from exactly this point, but once again, to draw the 170 newton force properly, we have to make sure that the engines and the gaps are all airtight. So. Uh, we're gonna start this uh, uh, this 170 newton from here, but to make this to make it to 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 draw this properly, we are also once again we're gonna need the reference level. So I'm gonna draw this thing, this horizontal line, once again at this level, so that we can very eff effectively start to draw the figure. So yeah. Now the question says that with the horizontal, the 170 newton force produces uh, 20 degree. So let's say we're gonna label some 20, 20 degree over here. Okay, so I've drawn the, I've drawn the two forces uh, with appropriate length and appropriate angle, and then we can very easily find out the resultant, and as per the triangle rule, the rule says that the resultant should be the vector starting from the starting point all the way to the end of the ending point. So this, this straight line might, uh, might as well be my vector. Uh, re resultant, I mean. Yes, so in this case, the resultant force can be found out like this. So this is how the triangle rule works. The idea of polygon rule is just an extension of this thing. Here you can see that we actually place two of these forces one after another, and we simply found the resultant. What if we 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 uh, what if we have more than two or three forces working on the uh, system, and we want to we, we place all of them one after another in a sequence in a sequential way? Yes. 
কিসের কোন সময় বেতন আচ্ছা ক্লাস নিতেছে আমি এখন আচ্ছা তো আমার অফিস রুমে বসা মামুন কেন হ্যান্ডেল দিস আচ্ছা আই এম সরি সো দ্য আইডিয়া অফ পলিগন পলিগন রুল ইজ দ্যাট উই ক্যান ইফ উই ওয়ান্ট টু ওয়ান্ট টু হ্যাভ মাল্টিপল ফোর্স ওয়ার্কিং অন অবজেক্ট উই ক্যান এসেনশিয়ালি গো ফর স্ট্যাকিং অল অফ দিস ফোর্স রাদার দ্যান হ্যাভিং অনলি টু অফ দেম ওয়ান আফটার অ্যানাদার সো ওয়ান অফ দ্য ওয়েজ আই ক্যান শো ইউ দিস एग्जांपल লেটস সে ইন দিস কেস আই এম গোনা লেটস সে আই এম গোনা কপি পেস্ট দিস দিস হোল সিনারিও লেটস সে আদার দ্যান হ্যাভিং অনলি টু ফোর্সেস ওভার হিয়ার ইফ উই ডিড হ্যাভ নট আই ডোন্ট নিড দ্যাট মেনি if we had another force which is working like this let's say uh, i have another force that is working in this direction bit tilted let's say this angle with the horizontal was let's say this force is uh, 125 newton with an angle of let's say 25 degrees and let's say we have another force over here so let's say this force was i don't know how much maybe 90 90 newton which might as well produce some angle uh over here let's say that is uh, 60 70 60, 50 50 degrees let's say so we can have these forces in this way so in this case you can see that there are four forces working on this object and now the idea is pretty simple that let's say if we have these forces to be f1 f2 let's say f3 and f4 let's say if these forces are working in this way what we can actually do is that we can try to stack these forces one after another in the very same way we stacked f1 and f2 over here so other than stacking only two of them we can stack all four of them let's say if i do that by keeping the direction intact let's say f1 comes up to be in that direction so let's say this is the f1 vector start with appropriate angle A appropriate angle means that for every single place you have to draw your alignment you have to you might have to draw the horizontal line because these angles are given with respect to horizontal line except for f4 f4 is given with respect to f3 so how we should process that information uh, i'll tell you that in a bit as well so let's say you draw the f1 with appropriate scale then you draw the f2 in appropriate appropriate scale which is a bit longer then from that point you draw the f3 a bit uh, uh, f3 over here in a very direction what is which is 125 so slightly bigger than that and then let's see if we are going you're going to draw uh, the f4 over here so try to understand if i whenever i have, i'm going to complete all of these few four figures in a single in a polygon not as a shaded triangle in a polygon stacking up all the forces one for another with appropriate scale and angle you can see that if it is the case that f1 and f2 and f3 and f4 produces an open polygon this is what i mean by an open polygon where the the starting point of the of the first force does not perfectly coincide with the end point of the last force this is what i call an open polygon if we have a situation like this then these forces would not produce a non zero resultant force non zero resultant force means that in this case the resultant force of all of these all of these vectors which means f1 as vector plus f2 as vector plus f3 plus f4 these the, the the resultant sum of these forces would not be equals to zero which means the object will not be in equilibrium there is there is going to be some unbalanced force and how much is that unbalanced unbalanced force this can be very easily copied from this figure as well have a look over here whenever we applied for the triangle rule the resultant force was very easily found out by drawing an arrow from the starting point of the first vector to the end point of the of the of the last vector last in this case would mean second because for triangle rule we we essentially only draw two vectors so but the resultant could be found in this manner from the start of the first vector to the end point of the last vector or the second vector so in this case also i can find out the resultant in the exact same manner which can be shown i will be draw it purple that you start to draw a straight line from the start of your starting vector and finish it up at the point where your polygon was polygon got finished so let's say this is our end point and in this case this much force will practically give us the resultant force so this will be our resultant force and if you can have a have a look at the arrow direction uh, try to remember that here the two component forces are working like this the resultant should work in opposite sequence opposite sequence means if you consider this direction continuously 
this should be the regular direction of cyclic order but the resultant should be in the opposite direction so that's why the resultant was shown like in this way for a polygon rule this would be the scenario so it was checked idea and, and the other idea that i want to tell you is that if this resultant force is supposed to be zero if we have to achieve the resultant force as to be zero then this line should not exist this line not existing means that somehow whenever after we plot all the forces of one after another with appropriate values and angle with appropriate scale if the end point of those sequence perfectly coincides with the starting point which means that if we, if we have a scenario where the four forces that we are trying to draw over here do meet up like this for example let's have f1 f2 f3 and f4 like that and after drawing an appropriate scale figure we find out that the end point of the f4 perfectly coincide on the starting point of the f1 if that actually happens that would mean that the resultant force a uh, sorry sorry is a resultant force this arrow doesn't exist in this figure all the forces are essentially cancelling out out each other's effect this is the case where we will have equilibrium of force so that's the basic idea for polygon if i summarize the whole thing with appropriate scale and direction if we place all the fair vectors one after another after completing the process if we get a closed polygon if we get a closed polygon what in that case resultant force should be what question about cj let's say whenever multiple forces are working on a single object if we place all those vectors with appropriate scale and appropriate angle one after another for example situation like this or like this if you have a closed polygon out of this uh, stacking process for example like this in this case the resultant force should be what zero zero this one should give us a resultant force zero and if we have an open polygon open polygon means that the starting point and the end point do not coincide perfectly then the resultant force should be non zero and we can find the resultant force by following the same process of the triangle rule so uh, the reason i first to extend the triangle rule over here is because the idea for polygon rule is basically an extension of the triangle rule for multiple forces you just stack one after another with appropriate value and everything and eventually you find out the actual result and open polygon to bujla open polygon mane hocche je amader once we place all the vectors one after another if if i mean i am trying to show, i'm not trying to show you here two different examples if you have four forces working on the case and if you whenever after you after you after you have completed your figure uh by drawing all the forces one after another in an appropriate sequence if it so happens that this is the final figure that you end up with that your starting point of the f1 which is over here does not perfectly coincide with the end point of the of the first last vector if these two points are not same that would mean that this is an open polygon because this looks like a polygon but you are missing one side do you see that yes i got so yes bolo sir um ekhon triangle er moddhe triangle er kache dui ta force chilo tai na kintu ei polygon er moddhe char ta to tahole to amader like scale ta ektu mane different hobe na dui tar scaling yeah it depends on how much space do you have available i mean you will always have to accommodate your figure in the amount of space that you have available so you might proportionately big uh, make your figure enlarge or you know, proportionally make your figure smaller but the, whatever the change that you do you will always have to choose a smaller scale so the actual pressure kokhono triangle or by by ki bole a polygon rule kono smart dibe na you will never have to you will never have to draw a polygon rule but you have to know what are the implications of it and what means what you have to know about this thing i mean you will never be asked to draw a figure actually physically on your exam paper uh but you might be as you be asked to draw a triangle rule right a triangle rule is is a part of the syllabus but you'll never be asked to draw this figure with appropriate scale never but essentially the scale value scale value might change uh depending on depending on how how big or how small do you want to draw the figure that can happen okay. did i answer your question g sir okay yes sir yes <laughs> এই অর্ডারে আমরা ফোর্স একটা আরেকটার সাথে স্ট্যাক আপ করে ওই অর্ডারটা তো ডাজেন্ট ম্যাটার রেজাল্টেন্ট তো সেমই থাকবে তাই না দা অর্ডার ডাজ নট ম্যাটার ইয়েস ট্রু দা অর্ডার অনেস্টলি ডাজ নট ম্যাটার আচ্ছা 
সো এটা একটা জিনিস গেল আর আরেকটা জিনিস যেটা আমাদের লাগলো সেটা হচ্ছে আচ্ছা কে জানা চ্যাটুন যে একটা জিনিসটা আছে দাঁড়াও আমি চ্যাটুন দেখতে চাই এক মিনিট আমি এই যে এটা একটু ক্লিয়ার করে আনি আচ্ছা জারা ওয়ালাইকুম আসসালাম পলিগন then you will have a balanced force or zero resultant that's the way it works ana sir ki bhabe ni chhu je eta open polygon na ki closed polygon eta ache you have to physically draw this entire figure with appropriate scale and with appropriate angles appropriate angle gulo akar jonno tomar sob jaygay the reference line rakhte hobe that's why i show you showed you this for example whenever you are trying to draw your f1 you should have one reference line horizontal line over here with appropriate angle that is, that is given over here let's say 40 degree you can see over here so you should have a 40 degree over here and draw this 100 newton force with appropriate length then you have to draw another horizontal line over here you draw 20 degree line for to represent 170 up to this part so you have to draw this one so you have to have reference lines at every single position and slowly you have to stack one after another stacking in this case i mean that uh, starting the next vector from the end point of the earlier vector that's what i mean, mean by the word stacking মানে or in other cases or, or well, i mean what, what do i mean for this thing as well uh, it's a good question that you asked uh, i forgot to tell you this earlier in in some cases this vector polygon might be crisscross crisscross means it is possible that for some cases your your uh, for a, for a random case not for this example you can have your vector polygon look like this let's say your first vector looks like this and then your second vector goes like this then your third vector goes like this the fourth one goes like this and the fifth one goes like this but the sixth one ultimately finishes here exactly at the end point of the first vector let's say your figure finishes up over here you can have a vector polygon that looks like this depending on our, depending on your, on the choice of your vector vector values one after another but that's the point that if you this is the this is the important bit that if you're starting and the end point coincide that means resultant forces non scale that's the bit that's the point these forces might actually cross across each other but if you really want to make a good good looking polygon you might have to do some trial and error to find out that what are the sequence that i should go for to make a beautiful polygon like this but in actual drawing scenarios you can you, you might not be able to predict that from earlier sir yes sir order can matter for the no i mean for possible order matter for me no if i do if i take this out and place it over here acha sir bishesh this actually doesn't doesn't change the equation that's why order wouldn't matter ei polygon rule er concept ta ki bujha geche shobai clearly any question please sir anyone yes sir acha sir The other thing that I wanted to show you is that how can we calculate the resultant of vet of vectors if we have situation like this by using components. Now the component calculation can prove to be a bit complicated, so I want all eyes to be very wide open and try to bear with me. So let's say I'm going to try to calculate the actual resultant of these four forces by doing some actual mathematical calculation. So I'm going to I'm going to use this figure for my calculation I'm going to do the calculation on the right side so bear with me I'm minimizing all the uh, chat window and the participant window because I'm going to write up over here uh, so if you have any question you uh, you please ask me uh, alongside 
the first thing that, that is very important that if whenever we try to go for component calculation, we always preferably divide it, each individual force into their uh, horizontal component and into their perpendicular components. Now, one of the important rule that I can always apply, if you consider the basic coordinate system like this, where this is all uh, sine, tan, cos. Do you know this figure? Kids? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if I, if I, if I employ this figure, then you should remember one thing very, very clearly is that for any angle that we work, angles should always be measured in an anti-clockwise direction for positive angle. If you go for a clockwise direction, then the angle should be negative. Do you know this thing? Yes, sir. Because angles are negative, sorry, positive and clockwise angles are positive. That's the first thing that I want to tell you, number one. And number two, if you have a vector, now number two, uh, remember, let's say you, you have a random vector. Uh, I, I, let me just show you a random uh, a random line over here. Let's say you have a, a force that is that's looking like this. You want to find out its two components. So if this is the angle it produces with the horizontal or with the positive x-axis, let's say this is theta, then this over, along this line, we are gonna have f, f cos theta. So let's say if this is f, then this must should be f cos theta. And this one should be what? This one should be f sine theta. Sine. Right? Which means if you can measure the angle properly with the with this angle, you can get the values using the cos the cosine fraction will give you the horizontal components, and the sine fraction will always give you the vertical components. Now, to make I mean the reason I'm telling you this is because this will give you a rule of thumb to work very easily with this whole process. If you don't want to use this information, you can also logically find out the components over here to find out the resultant force. That also works. What do I mean by logically? I'm gonna show you that as well. So I'm gonna show you the calculation of this uh, component division in two different ways. So bear with me for the uh, keep your eyes peeled. One of the ways that I can go for over here and do this calculation is let's say I'm gonna approach this by logical calculation. Then I'm gonna use, uh, in the second part, I'm gonna use this one. And I want you to compare and understand what is happening. I can write that the resultant of all the horizontal forces, let's say res resultant of fx, only the x means along the horizontal axis. This I can write like this, have a look. In this case, we're gonna consider, I mean, the way the coordinate system works, upward is positive, towards right is positive, downward is what? Negative, and leftward is also negative. Which means if you have a look at these four forces, which of the forces will give us a positive, or positive horizontal component? And which of the forces would give us a negative horizontal component? Have a look at this figure. Try to tell me. F1 or F2 I am asking for the horizontal component, not the vertical component. For F1 or F4 positive, F3 negative. Exactly. Do you do all of you see that that F1 will have a positive component over here? F4 will also have a positive horizontal component, but F2 and F2 would have negative horizontal component. Can we all see that? That's Just by looking at this figure. So Jesus. if I go for a logical calculation, I will require this angle over here because other than having this angle, I cannot do this calculation because the question, let's say, gave me this angle. So let me just find out this angle first because I'll need that for my calculation. How much would be this angle? A angle to follow the other. Anyone? 125. It is supposed to be 125? 125. Since you give 25 and 30. Did I, did I define this to be 50 degree or, or, or 30 degree? I actually forgot. My handwriting sucks. Assume this to be 50 degree, not, not 30. And it's 105. 105 should be an obtuse angle. So 50 doesn't work. Uh, if it Maybe you should just assign that angle a different like, value, less than 90. Uh, 
Okay, let me just change this number. I'll eventually work with this figure. I'll copy paste this figure. So I can actually, I can, I still have the uh, privilege to change this angle. Let's say, other than having this, let's say 100. So, okay, let's say this angle is 100 degrees. Let's make this one that of this angle. If this is 100 degrees, then how much this should be? Should this be? It should be uh, 55, 55 degrees, right? That, 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 that serves my purpose. So that is okay. So, so now if I try to calculate this one, I can essentially write for the F1 part, this can be written as 100 cos 40 plus so I can write 100 plus 40 plus 90 cos 55. Kids have calculated at hand and try to help me with the calculation. I mean, you might not as well tell the calculation, but you should do the calculation. Keep up with the class and check the values over there. What whatever your classmates give us, uh, uh, check whether those are correct. So concur. Minus 170 cost 20 uh, cost 20 minus 125 cost 25. That's what a, a, a logic to Buzha taking a shower. I used okay. this angle and this angle. I used these angles and logically found out the resonant force. Minus 144. Uh, point, minus 144. 144.81. Someone yes, else, I mean, I mean, a couple of more people confirm this number. Yes, sir. Doc, you can respond to the chat window. If you respond to the chat window, then you can respond to the chat window. If you do the same process for the resultant force in the vertical plane, then you can respond to the chat window. If you do the same process for the resultant force in the vertical axis, then, then what, what can I write? Go ahead. For the vertical axis, this this can be written as have a look. In this case, if I judge these two forces, all the upward components should be positive vertical component, all the downward forces should be negative vertical component, which means for this figure, F1 and F2 should give us positive vertical output, and F3 and F4 should give us negative vertical output. So let me just try to write this. So I, I can as well write that 100 sine 40 plus 170 sine 20. This is the, the positive components that I have. Minus uh, 125 sine 25 minus 90 sine 55. This is a logical calculation. How much do you get from here? Minus 4.12. I'll go to the other place below. Minus 4.1287. So this should have been minus 4.13. Anyway, I'm using longer numbers over here so that my uh, round of error is less. So if on the calculation put the problem, and once we have these two values, we can actually find out the result. And now, before I go ahead and do the result, then, can you guess in which quadrant should the resultant exist just by looking at these two numbers? Can anybody guess? Third quadrant. Third quadrant is a correct response. Everyone else, try to guess why third quadrant could be a correct response. Sine cos negative. Because sine negative, cos negative. Yeah. Exactly. Horizontal component negative minus two towards left. But you come in much downwards and left towards downwards, not me. Look on the downward left, downward left. Man, what's a third quadrant? Now, one of the important things that I really want to remind you is that unless the question gives you, gives you the direction in directions of the map, 
as a northeast west sign or uh, northeast not i mean not southeast west you cannot use those empirical directions if the question has those direction implied in your question then you can use those direction if they doesn't have then you can only use up down left right डाउन But if I say that this is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west, then I could have said that the resultant force is going to work in the uh, southwest, southward, southwest direction. That's what I'm trying to mean. That on a show student, you can say, "Okay, random matter question. Question. Which one? Question. I mean, let's say the question figure does not have north, east, south, west, but in the answer, they tend to give, bring about this information." you cannot bring about those information unless it is involved in the question in the first place unless it is provided in the question in the first place you cannot give, use those things angle lekha lagbe na je horizontal ba vertical er sathe eto angle er ha oi angle calculation ta korbo ami seta ekhono kori nei amar to just edure be korlam now i can very easily go for pythagorean formula so now the resultant force can be calculated as the root over of those two sum so this should be resultant fx squared Plus result in f y squared. So we can calculate the value of, from here. Someone give me this number. Uh, in three SF is good now, and then we can also find out the angle. Let's say the resultant force produces. Ah, let me try to draw the resultant force with purple in this figure. Should I uh, draw this figure? Ah, before I just draw this figure, let me just copy this up because I'm going to use the same figure for another set of calculation. I'll store it somewhere where. Uh, okay, I'll store it in the computer memory. Okay, so it at a value as be. This is the number or non number, and then I can I will say if I should represent my resultant force along this direction. uh let's say let's say the angle produced with the negative y axis i mean this axis is going to be uh what let's say theta uh so i can write that theta should be equals to which is the resultant vector should be equals to tan inverse uh y component vertical component divided by horizontal component ekhon amake ei dui ta value Uh, up to three SF, uh, three SF baller. The cotta. Every three SF color cotta hai. One forty four point eight six nine. One forty five. Okay, this is three SF one forty five, and this is in degree. How many? How many? How many degrees? Please do check whether your calculator is set, set in degree mode or not. I mean, it is for one another. I mean, very common, na. But when I bhul hai, then I think disaster hai. Jitni mass pura kore hai also. फॉर द Oh. So be careful to check this first. So, it is how much? One point. One point six three. One point six three degrees. So, because uh, because I can I have one point six three degrees, and this is supposed to go towards or left. So I can very well confidently try to draw the resultant over here. I said this resultant is supposed to be red. I can already take the dash down. So let me use a different color. Let's say I'm gonna use uh, brown. Brown is good. Okay. So let's say I'm gonna represent my resultant in this direction. Whether the whether I mean this figure this figure is essentially not drawn to scale, but I'm just using this figure to represent the resultant. Let's say this is the, my resultant. The value of this resultant is supposed to be 145 newton. So let me just write that. This is 145 newton. 
and the angle it produces with this axis with the negative x axis this is how much 1.63 degree if you want to write this in words if you want to write this the information this two information in words you, you can write it like this i'm telling with the sentence that the resultant of these forces of these forces uh, is 145 newton which works at 1.63 degree angle north of west can i write that north of west well north of west would be it would have been a correct card description if north east south west were given since it is not given i cannot write that so i can write, so i should have said this the resultant force of these forces is 145 newton which works at 1.63 degree with the horizontal comma downwards left so sir north south east west south west but the question jodi dewa na thake north east south west jodi dewa na thake tar jonno north east south west that's the point that i'm trying to highlight here so first thing i'm the first thing i'm mentioning for the angle that 1.63 degree angle was made with which reference line this this was made with the x axis and what is the actual direction of this of this of resultant this is working downward left so i'm going to mention it as downward left or you can write leftward down that also works they both mean the same thing i mean towards the bottom left corner that's the whole idea yes sadia bolo sir eta to mane jodi question e chai tahole amon kore स्टेजेस Let's say in one stage you find out the resultant of F n on F two. In another, in in a second diagram you find out the resultant of F three and F four. Then you do the sum of those two resultants to find out the final resultant. For triangle and parallelogram rule, your component vectors are two, your resultant vectors are one. So you can only merge two vectors, not more than two vectors, using triangle rule or parallelogram rule. That's the limitation we have over there. But for the component calculation, you can do as many forces that you want to work with. No big deal. मच Uh, more wrong answer in your in your process because uh, the degree divisions for the protector is one degree, so you have some systematic error possibility in that part. And drawing always consumes more time compared to actual calculation. I mean, try to think about it. If you understand the mathematical procedure of this amount of writing, this whole writing would take much less time compared to drawing three set of uh, triangles uh, to find out this thing with appropriate scale and everything. Don't you agree? if you understand this working this this method of the method of writing these calculation values then this would always take uh, take less time if it makes sense to you okay definitely sadia bujhu ke bolse sir in sir uh, in the exams the angles will always be given in degrees we, we never radian right well as far as i have seen all the questions that these angles never showed in 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 radian uh, they only showed in a degree and exclusively they showed in degree uh, so but if i if, if you ask me that is it impossible that these angles can be shown in with radian i must say that uh, it might appear to okay. be in degree it might i mean if the, if the uh 
Okay, sir, never mind. Even if it is in radians, we will put on the radian mode on the calculator and do the maths. Exactly. Same. If we do not want to go for logical calculation, like if we don't want to deal with the plus and minus sign by using our brain, brain corrosion is a plus and minus. plus and minus. a mechanism. This is a mechanism. This is a mechanism. This is a plus and minus. This is a mechanism. This is a mechanism. This is a mechanism. This is a mechanism. So I'm going to extend out my working space. Let's say paste this figure. So I'm going to work with this figure one more time. So let me give a line over here. So this is one part of the calculation. And then this was the other part of the calculation. So I'm going to use this concept now. So one of the idea for this concept is that each of the angles for this process to work, for, for me to be able to work with this procedure, I mean this procedure, each of the forces angle should be labeled from the positive x-axis in the anti-clockwise direction, two things. All the angles should start from positive x-axis in anti-clockwise direction. So let's try to label those angles. Let's say F1 produces an angle of 40 degrees. So I can write that theta 1, theta 1 in this case, I'm meaning for F1, theta 1 is exactly 40 degrees. I want the question already that was beautiful. Now, how much should be this angle? Which is theta 2. Tell me. 160. What? Here you had 20 degree. This is a straight line. So this is supposed to be 160 degree. Do you all agree to this one? Take this out. From the positive yeah. axis in anti-clockwise direction. How much would be theta 3? How much would be this much angle? 205. This is going to be 160 plus, I mean 180 plus 25. That is 205 degrees. Good. And how much would be theta 4? Which means this so 160 one. 160 plus 125 is 185. No, 180 plus 25 is 180 plus 25. Let's see. Because oh, this much is 180. I mean, this horizontal line plus 25. Yes, that is 205. How much would be theta 4? 300. No, not 300. 360 minus 55. 305. Yeah, that's what I said. Asha, I'm sorry. So this would be 305 degrees. Hold on. That's a degree calculation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you want to yes, apply sir. the empirical rule of cos theta and sin theta formation, you have to have the value of the uh, forces from the positive axis in the anti-clockwise direction for all the forces. If you can, if you calculate out these angles, then in, in that case, you don't have to use any part of your brain to check out for plus and minus. Again, plus and minus a part to go. We have to find out the plus and minus directions from this figure using our brain. That upward should be uh, po positive plus, uh, y axis plus, and downward should be y x is negative and rightward should be uh, horizontal positive and leftward should be horizontal negative. We have to use that logic and we go calculate the plus and minus. But if you don't want to do that, if you do just want to go ahead with the calculation, you need these angles. I'm going to show you how this works. Now, if I have these angles, calculation actually becomes much too easier. I mean, just because I want to use these angles, I'm going to try to put these angles over here. I might as well want to squeeze them a bit. To accommodate this a little bit more, they are still re readable. Okay, let's say I'm going to put these angles over here. Okay, that works. Uh, this was supposed to be 40. Yes. So let me try to calculate all of this, all, all of these values over here. Now, resultant force F X can be very easily calculated as 100 cos 40. Plus 170 cos 160 plus 125 cos 205 plus uh, 90. 
90 cos 305. Calculate this whole thing in a single go in your calculator and give me this number in 5 SM. Minus 144.81. Compare these two numbers. This one and that one. What do you get? You get the exact value. So do you understand what I'm trying to show you? I mean, do you understand the difference of the procedure that I'm trying to highlight here? Everyone, <coughs> yes, sir. So, it is equal to the angle of the but beyond that point, to my math, I like Bena. You just directly shop a formula was one cos cosine, all the cosines would be your horizontal component, and the sines will automatically take care of themselves depending on the uh, value of the angle. And you can directly go for the sign part as well. So, I can write the fy. I do not really want to write the fy in detail because it will be all of this whole thing simply all the causes will become sine. So do that calculation in your calculator smartly. Don't do, don't don't miswrite them, and tell me this number. How much do you get over here? Minus four point one three. This one minus one four point one two one one two eight seven. If I go for five percent, this exit value should show up by all means. Now, does it make sense to all of us? Yes. Once we have these two numbers, the rest of the calculation is exactly identical. So I don't I want to bother you to write these things. But the, the process can be any of these two. I personally like this method. Among all the methods, graphical method, calculation method, during these two calculation method, I personally like this one because if you're working with a big number of forces, which we are taught to do as for engineering problems in, in our bachelor's level, in that case, remembering the effect of each and every force as per their individual alignment is can prove to be pretty troublesome and time consuming uh, for every every orientation. Rather, if once you if you define the angle of each of these each of these forces uh, 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 first uh, from the from the figure, then you can blindly apply the equations like that, and everything is are, are just gonna fall into places. Works every time. Any question? Sir. Yes. Sir, quarter of the way up, Nibolan to decimal place was same rough. Our quarter of the same significant figures on the same tab, significant figures. Pokon Punta Bujina Avalo. Sir, quarter of Nibolan and Jama the decimal places same rough. The Hogabar quarter of the significant. Bold the same. Whenever you are calculating an, an intermittent value, or intermittent in between value, which you, you plan to use further for further calculation. For example, this thing is not my answer. This is not my answer. This is my final answer. This is also my final answer. Final answers should be kept in 3SF, preferably. But in between values, for in between values, which I'm going to use for further calculation, I prefer to be, you keep more than 3SF. I usually prefer to keep 5SF. Answers, final answers should always be in 3SL. Sir, final answer 5SL is because, because according to CIE, you should keep your final answers in 2SF or 3SF. This is the only two acceptable SF variation according to CIE uh, instruction. Yes. There is a very exclusive ex exception of this of this rule which works in our A2 syllabus for nuclear mass calculation, but that is extremely exclusive. You don't have to no take this as a rule. That is an exception. And why that exception is important? But I mean, A2 don't worry about that. So, A part one, sir, Yes, sir. So I'm gonna share you the uh, 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 MCO uh, worksheets uh, in in a bit. Ask uh, Don't worry. Worksheet to channel down channel. Down is it? Down is it? 
Dohan hai. Dohan hai. Dohan hai. So I'm just just to start you with the worksheet. I'm gonna show you some problem uh, so that you can actually uh, jump start the process on your own. So I'm gonna choose some MCU questions to discuss or for the remaining time that we have. How how long is your class? Once again. I'll try and remember that this is 5.15 and 7.15. I'm sorry, I was late because I was uh, thinking it wrong. Uh, there are a lot of questions over here. Uh, we can essentially talk about those, those questions, but the idea that you just learned, fresh, if I take you directly to that idea, things can be things can be a bit more easier to process. For example, right over here. Question number one, give it a try. Okay, one of your classmates responded B. How about the rest of you? C. Okay, one of your classmates responded C as well. How about the rest of you? A. One of your classmates responded A. How about the rest of you? A. A. What is the difference between A and B? Direction of Z. Direction is a bit tilted, exactly. <laughs> okay, one of your classmates in, in the answer in our chat window also proposed D. Hold on, please respond in the public chat. Don't write to me privately unless you're really trying to tell me privately something private. So write in the in the public chat that that works. So, A. Let me help you to give you some idea for this question. So let me just select this thing and take it out. Okay. So let's have a look. The question says that z equals to x minus y. So if I just write this equation over here for my for for, for, for my clarification, so this is supposed to be my equation, z equals to x minus y. It is always useful. If I express this into positive form, so it, I can as well write that z plus y equals to x. You are trying to find out this figure. This is easier for you to process. Now have oh. a look. Which figure shows you this thing? B. 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 Can you all agree now that the correct answer should be B? Check it out. A would give us the equation, which would be z plus x equals to y. Z and X are in the same se same sequence, same sequence. Where Y is the opposite. But we're not trying to find out Z plus X equals to Y. We're trying to find out Z plus Y equals to X. That's why B is the direct response. See if it makes sense, everyone. Yes. Minus the minus the chinta korata jai, but that thick eight a chinta kore bear korata on easier. That's why I'm showing you this method. So write up the equation. Convert it into a positive format and then check out the figure and it all becomes much easier to process. All right. How about for number two? So go planar monarchy, same plane. Yes. What is the duration of this resultant? What do you think? Mm. One of your friends responded D. Sir, D, no, I'm not sure. Ita, Korak, Shahojeta Buddha, Shah Buddha Cherubo. Try to understand. Ekane, I'm on the 
এই ফোর্সটা দিস ফোর্স ইজ শোন ইন এট সাম অ্যাঙ্গেল বাট দিস টু ফোর্স এ পারপেন্ডিকুলার টু ইচ अदर রাইট আদার দ্যান অ্যাটেম্পটিং আদার দ্যান অ্যাটেম্পটিং টু ফাইন্ডিং আউট দা ফোর্সেস অল দা থ্রি ফোর্সেস রেজাল্টেন্ট কাম টুগেদার উই ক্যান অলওয়েজ ডু ওয়ান থিং উই ক্যান ফাইন্ড আউট দা রেজাল্টেন্ট অফ টু অফ দা ফোর্সেস হুইচ আর কনভিনিয়েন্ট ফর আস টু ফাইন্ড এন্ড দেন ট্রাই টু অ্যাড দোজ দ্যাট রেজাল্টেন্ট উইথ দা রিমেইনিং ফোর্স সো আদার দ্যান ডুইং লেটস সে থ্রি ভেক্টর 3 প্লাস ভেক্টর 4 প্লাস ভেক্টর 4 at the same step what we can do we can find out the resultant of these two because they are in perpendicular relation so pythagorean rule law can be applied then we can try to find out the resultant of these two with the other force so we can find out f3 plus f4 and then try to find out how much does that resultant add up to 4 now have a look this is 3 plus 4 so if i apply pythagorean rule this the resultant of these two forces only these two forces should be, should be working 5 in this direction right yes the resultant of 3 plus 4 these two should be working in this direction and the value of this should be 5 root over 3 square plus 4 square gives you 5 now this is 5 newton and this is 4 newton how much should be the resultant of these two only in which direction should this resultant work upward right upward right upward right so d is your correct response that there you go so that's the trick that you try to find out the resultant of of all the forces of the all the three or four forces that you have available try to figure out the resultant of the two forces that is easier for you to find this idea would be very useful in the in some other upcoming mcqs as well sir suppose theta apnar perpendicular forces dewane tahole ki hobe ton ki korte hoy sheram dekhabo question aste chito pore don't worry i'll show you sir yes sir to abane a to first e cancel ho jabe na jodi eigulo break na kore age dekhi a to hor kotha na ekdomi bujhe nai bujhe nai a bolo mane sir a question number 2 to a option ta to mane valid na tai na hm mane a a i s c e dui ta mane ektu confuse hoye jacche bujhchi na a i c to thik hote parbe na tai na well i did not bother to choose each of the directions individually what i tried to achieve i mean the way i actually solve this problem is not by process of elimination rather than solving the problem and then choosing a single answer i did not go for a process of elimination for this for this question so i actually found out that the resultant is supposed to to, to have a one value in this direction because uh, two of these give us five and four is working the exactly opposite way i can see that the line is exactly this opposite way so the resultant should be one on this direction so i found out the resultant and then i chose d directly i didn't go for elimination but if you want to go for elimination yes you can logically eliminate a c and d individually yeah. that you can do as well no sir mane ami apni ki process ta bujhchi na ta bujhechi but mane confusion je a to n to hote parbe na ichhane na a a hote parbe na but i mean a hote parbe na eta tumi uh i mean why a cannot be the answer just by looking at this figure i mean that is that might not be quite visible to you unless you know the exact angle of this information for example a could have been an answer a could have been an answer if we had this figure acha i would like to rub this off because this is not a part of our figure for the given figure a could have been an answer if this force was not in this alignment rather this force was shown to be like this let's say i have to copy this and so acha let me rub this off all together and increase the grid <coughs> okay i have transparency resolution selected it is good so let's say if i copy paste this one over here so i have the same grid so a could be an answer if this third force had a vertical length of 1 vertical length of 2 but a horizontal length of 4 so if this force was aimed like this have a look if this force was aimed like this then the correct answer could have been a you might wonder how have a look if this was the question if if the question was this one then i would be solving this problem in a different manner what is the different manner 
I would try to find out the components of these two forces and check out whether the horizontal component, how, how does the horizontal component of this force work with this one? Have a look. If I try to divide this force into its components, one of the component can be this much to the left and the other component can be this much to the down. Do you agree? Yes. Now you can see it very well that this force, this component, this horizontal component of this big force perfectly balance out four Newton, four divisions to the left, four divisions to the right. So these two cancel out. This one has a vertical value of how much? How many divisions? Three divisions, but this one has a vertical division of how much? Two, two divisions, sorry. In this, for, sorry, my bad. For this figure, the resultant was supposed to be vertically upwards. And Bulaxi. For this figure, the resultant was supposed to be vertically upwards. Well, I can actually correct this figure. Do you see this? Yes, Let's say I'm going to do control Z, 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 get rid of this force. <coughs> now, if this, this has to be the force, let's say if I want to make this one as a result in numbers, which means my vertical component of this force should be one division vertically bigger than this one. So that should have, that should be perfectly four on the downward direction and four on the rightward direction as well. So that force should look like this, four by four. If you have a, if you have a vector that looks like this in your question, in that case, that can give you A. How? Because this force would, ha would, would have a horizontal component of this much. Four I see, three no, I see. That works. <coughs> so if the if this force was shown to be four by four, three by three, and then four by four, okay. If this was my third force that is shown, then the answer could have been a. Check this out. Sir, so, so, the A force mm -hmm. uh, right towards the 4 Newton such a resultant direction the positive. But you have to go, you, you could calculate this using the values for the form. formula the column, direction by column. But you can the But you can actual calculation. You can use the grid to efficiently use the element by the column. But the point that I'm trying to make is that if this third force was labeled like this, this would mean that the horizontal component should be four divisions to the left for the coming from this one, and the vertical vertical force should be four divisions in the bottom. These two should come, should cancel each other out, whereas these two will not cancel each other out because this one has three three newton, this one has four newton. In that case, A could have been your answer. Yes. Hello. Yes, Everyone. No, I mean, this is a four by four. So, Edigo four, Edigo four. So, if you go for number three, how about number three? I should uh, try to try to help you remember that I showed you in the kinematics and momentum chapter. The last thing that we showed for the theory class was that if you have two vectors P and Q at an angle alpha with each other, the resultant could be given by a certain version of the cosine rule, but with a plus sign. Do you remember this formula? Yes, sir. Was it alpha or theta? Whatever. So you can find out by directly using this equation. 
that will work <coughs> or you can use the basic idea of construction with the equation shop boss of ultimately the answer be 10 newton you can go directly choose 10 newton or if you want to use the idea of construction you can also do that how do you do the construction idea let me help you this angle is how much 120 degree right if i and these two are 10 and 10 so if i try to complete a parallelogram over here if you wonder why parallelogram because the given forces <coughs> are already starting from the same point so if i try to complete a parallelogram over here let's say i, try, I will draw one horizontal line you can draw any horizontal line as big as you want no big deal and then try to draw a line that is parallel to this one so let's say that parallel line might as well look like this now the diagonal should look like this this should be your diagonal i'm showing the diagonal by blue for example this is supposed to be a diagonal now you should be able to see it very clearly once if you complete the parallelogram rule that you have you very clearly have created two uh two uh didn't keep all the triangle is upside equal you can be able to see that you have created an equilateral triangle because this is 120 degree and they're equal on both sides you can also see that this should be 60 degree this should be 60 degree and this this should be also be 60 degree. which means if this is an equilateral triangle this is 10 this is also 10 because this is 10 so this should be 10 so this one is supposed to be also 10 as well so if you can you can also go ahead by drawing or if you if you don't remember the equation or if you remember the equation if you can directly go for the equation and calculate the number anyway you can work if, if both of them works equally dekha bujha gaya sekena make sense everyone yes sir yes sir acha how about number 4 Like I told you, for the case of the polygon rule, that if we place the vectors one after another, and if they give us a closed polygon, then the resultant should be zero. In this case, we have only three forces. If you can apply that logic to all polygon, you should be able to apply that logic for a triangle as well. What I mean, if you place all the individual forces <coughs> with their appropriate direction and alignment. for a zero resultant case that should give us a closed triangle where all the forces should be in the same sequence which means if you start from one point as your first force after you have placed all the three forces one after another with the appropriate scale and alignment it should give us a closed triangle now if you have a look at this figure what is the weight of the sign do they tell us the weight of the sign yes 20 yes, sir 20 and that should be working perfectly vertically downwards well that that is a true thing for all the four options all the four figures a b c or d give us 20 newton working vertically downwards no problem there then in the question also says that the tension in the y is 40 newton so that 40 newton force should be parallel with the 40 newton shown in all of the figures which is also true for all the four figures have a look this 40 newton is parallel with this y This fourteen newton is also parallel with this square. This fourteen newton is also parallel with this square. This fourteen newton is also parallel with this square. The last thing they are asking us is that which can the force exerted by the pole at point X is F. So the pole is exerting a force at point X. We do not let's say that force is M. <coughs> Now which figure should give us for an equilibrium scenario? Because the question tells you this thing: the diagonal force is sine of weight to a newton suspended from a pole attached to a wall. the pole is kept in equilibrium keyword equilibrium equilibrium means all the forces would give us zero resultant which means if you place all the forces in the same sequence same sequence means what they should all be anti clockwise or they should all be clockwise one after another then you should get a closed triangle now which of this which of these three triangles shows you the forces in the same sequence
be A and B. Not A. A oh, sorry, sorry. Have a look. B. If you go for go for F, then you have 14 in the opposite direction. Then 20 in the opposite direction. But if you go for this way, then F has the opposite direction. So this is not the case. A shows B. you the resultant that 20 and 14 newton will produce. Together, 20 and 14 newton will produce F. I mean, if the F was the case, I mean, this one represents this figure represents the resultant produced by 20 plus 40. Because this two will produce a resultant in this direction. So the third force that should balance this force should be working in the opposite direction of equal magnitude. That's why B is the correct response. Here you can see all the three forces are given in the same sequence. And if you wonder, why does the same sequence thing comes, is coming from? The same sequencing thing is coming from the polygon rule. Like I said, that you, we are going to place all the vectors one after another in the same sequence and in the same value and in the same scale. And you should get a perfectly closed, closed polygon for the resultant to be zero. So this is the, this is the same sequence. Just take this out. That you're going to place all the vectors one after another. That is available in option press B. See if it makes sense. If you, under, if you know the logic, answering this question will take you only five or 10 seconds. You see that whether all the forces are given in the proper alignment, you see whether the weight is working particularly downwards and whether, whether in which of this figure we have a same sequence for all the figure, figure all, all for all the forces. In this case, the sequence is anti-clockwise. Now you might wonder that what if we try to draw this figure in the clockwise sequence, is that possible? The answer is a solid yes. How can we draw this figure in the clockwise direction? Simple, we just, if this question was given, was given to us with this thing flipped. In that case, A could have been a correct answer as well. To be honest, both of these figures, the big, after I have done the edit, both of these figures are the same figure. Check this out. Well, obviously, you have two figures in the question. A fully card figure, there will be only one card figure. But now, what I want you to look and appreciate that these two figures are exactly the same. See if you can agree to that information. I, I changed the arrow arrowhead. In the actual question, this arrow is working to the left. I edited to make that arrow looking to the right. Sir. G. Triangle rule and I say one after another result in force on the Yes, for the triangle, I mean, for the triangle rule, we use two component vectors, one after another, and the third side should give us the resultant. This figure, the, figures, the, th the figure that we are trying to get over here is not a direct application of triangle rule. It is an application of the polygon rule, which becomes a triangle because the number of forces involved in here is three. We have applied polygon rule, that polygon became a triangle because the number of forces is three. Do you understand? Yes. Both the same. I'll help. Using the triangle rule, what do we do? Using the triangle rule, we add up two vectors to find out the third vector. Now, if you are told that x plus y plus p is supposed to be zero, then this essentially means what? Z equals to minus p. Right now? Compare these two equations. Because if x plus y equals to z, I can very well write this one, x plus y minus z should be also equals to what? Zero. This means p and minus z are equal. So z equals to minus p or p equals to minus z. Using the triangle rule, by the default triangle rule, we can find out the resultant of two vectors. But if your third vector is working equal and opposite to that vector, then you can get a zero resultant force. That's what this figure is all about. We are trying to represent all the involved forces in a single figure. We're not trying to find out the resultant of these forces. We're trying to find out the resultant force of all the three figures. I mean, if the situation was like that, if the situation was like that, 
let's say once we place all the forces in the appropriate sequence, let's say we, we end up with a situation like this. Let's say there comes the other way. In that case, we could, we could say that the resultant of these two forces are not producing any equilibrium. So this question would have, would not, this information would, would have not been correct. Do you get my point? Thank you. But since we have all the, all the forces, since we have all the forces producing a closed triangle slash closed polygon, the resultant force is zero. So here we are not trying to find out the resultant of two of, of two of these forces. We are placing all the forces in appropriate sequence and it just so happens that we get a closed polygon. That polygon in this case is a triangle. So it proves equilibrium. মানে জিনিসটা এরকম আমি যদি অন্য একটা एग्जांपल দিয়ে বলি সেটা হচ্ছে যে মানে করে তোমার বাসা থেকে আমার ক্লাসরুম পর্যন্ত আমি না আমি जस्ट गिविंग एन एग्जांपल लेट्स से তোমার বাসা পর্যন্ত আমার ক্লাসরুম বন্ধ আসার পরে তাহলে তুমি ক্লাস করতে পারবা এটা হচ্ছে একটা স্টেটমেন্ট আর একটা স্টেটমেন্ট হচ্ছে আমার ক্লাস করতে পারতে হলে তোমাকে তোমার বাসা থেকে আমার ক্লাসরুম বন্ধ আসতে হবে এটাও একটা স্টেটমেন্ট দে বোথ মিন দ্য সেম থিং বাট দে হ্যাভ डिफरेंट ওয়ার্ডিং সেট Do I get my, do I, I mean, did you get my point? Yes, sir. Awesome, yes. So I'll be uploading these, uh, these PDFs uh, into your channel, uh, I think uh, tonight. I have to, I'll do a little bit of edit on this, uh, on this worksheet and we'll be having this tonight. Uh, thank you very much for the additional three minutes of attention. I hope it made sense. And from, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you will have these things as your home MCQ. I would want you to attempt the MCQ paper first. As your default homework, you want to play class over Saturday, then? Yes, sir. Ah, so Saturday, then. So, ah, so eight actor Jinish and uh, one more thing I am I would like to tell you is that uh, I'll definitely uploading this MC uh, worship to you. There is a slight possibility I might be going to see my kid at Chittagong, which who uh, who I still haven't grabbed at my hand. I'm in Dhaka. My kid happened in Chittagong, so I might go to Chittagong uh, uh, this upcoming week. If it, uh, so, we might have some missed classes in the next next week. If that happens, I'll definitely inform you in your messenger chat, your messenger group. And if it doesn't happen, then we'll definitely meet on Saturday class. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir. Okay, sir. Then, down this side, correction. I have something in my mind, but I'm not still sure if it's going to stick because I have a lot of Murubis to take care about. So I'm going to figure that out once I go to Chitagan. Sir, what do you mean by Murubis? Sir, I'm going to get my Steam account. There are four, four more people who are alive who I should take care into consideration. I mean, everyone has a say in naming one family heir, heir, heir in Bangladesh or in at least brown brown families if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sir, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm আপনাকে <laughs> Thank you, sir. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, sir.